Hi, my name is Steve Rahi. I'm a cloud solutions architect specializing in management technologies. Today's discussion is a continuation of our focus on the Intune suite that is available for uh, for Intune. The, the topic of today's discussion will be Microsoft Tunnel for MAM. So there are a few sessions in this series, specifically Microsoft Tunnel for MAM, firmware over the air update and specialty device management that will really be more summary type sessions because um, uh, they kind of, various reasons, they could either partner with other technologies that have been discussed, kind of little uh, ways to add on, or uh, frankly, I don't have the, the devices to be able to uh, demonstrate them, right? So for Microsoft Tunnel for MAM, it's an additional, uh, or the topic today with the Intune Suite, we provide additional support for Microsoft Tunnel usage for MAM-enabled devices, right? So let's let's get into this. So typical agenda, you know, what is uh, Microsoft Tunnel for MAM? What is Tunnel? Why do we care? Uh, Etc. So to kind of start the discussion, uh, as I've kind of already alluded to, Microsoft Tunnel for MAM builds on top of another technology, and, and that is Microsoft Tunnel, right? You can't do Microsoft Tunnel for MAM. You can't add support for using the Microsoft Tunnel in MAM unless you have the Microsoft Tunnel uh, implemented, right? So what is the Microsoft Tunnel? Well, put, put simply, the Microsoft Tunnel is a VPN gateway that is specifically focused for Intune. It provides devices access to internal resources if they're outside the network. So uh, here, think about uh, iOS, Android, right? That's where Microsoft Tunnel was introduced. I have heard uh, that there may be other places where it's introduced, but nothing definitive on that yet. So iOS and Android, if you have devices that are not connected to your VPN, otherwise not connected to your network Wi-Fi, somewhere roaming you know, around the world and your users need to be able to access internal resources, then Microsoft Tunnel is a mechanism that will allow you to do that. So at proxy, right? Is it an app proxy? The reason I asked that question is because prior to Microsoft Tunnel being introduced, the only mechanism really that we had was an Azure application proxy, right? And, and there are use cases for the Azure application proxy. It, it's a, a tremendous technology when uh, the situation calls for what it gives. Right, but there are some situations that just are not as easy to address with the application proxy as they are with Microsoft Tunnel. I think of several customers that I've worked with in the past where to achieve what they needed with the application proxy, it would have been a tremendous amount of more work versus just using the tunnel gate, the tunnel uh, VPN solution itself, right? So that's what tunnel is. I've actually got a session where I demonstrate setting up Tunnel. Um, it's It's been a while since I did that session, so something may have changed. I just actually talked with a colleague this morning asking uh, about a step-by-step, -step. so I don't know if something's changed in that arena, but the video that's out there should be uh, still very informative about what Tunnel is, how to set up Tunnel, you know, etc. Right. So what is then Microsoft Tunnel for MAM. Well, so what it is, is the tunnel itself, but now support has been extended to MAM-enabled devices. So when you think about MAM-enabled devices, these are typically unenrolled devices. MAM supports both unenrolled and enrolled devices, but in the case of tunnel, this will be unenrolled devices only, right? So if you have devices, uh, iOS or Android, that users have that, that have applications installed on them that need access to your internal network and the data uh, contained therein, uh, originally Tunnel did not support that. Now it does, right? So uh, you can have uh, uh, the best of that situation uh, as well, right? And so BYOD... Um, Sorry, I said that wrong. Uh, uh, MAM and enabled devi device management is a big deal in many circles, right? So that users can bring their own device. I, at Microsoft, bring my own iPhone, and it's uh, 
something I use to access corporate data and, and so forth, right? And um, it's a nice solution. It's my iPhone, but Microsoft can uh, manage the way that I'm able to access data. Same kind of scenario here. If the users don't want a full BYOD management experience where the device is enrolled and they only want to be able to uh, have the app itself managed while the device is not enrolled, this is the solution, right? This is a way to help augment that solution so that your uh, apps can, can get access to the data that they need. Okay. So uh, why tunnel? Going back to just tunnel, right? We talked about uh, app proxy and how app proxy just doesn't work for every kind of uh, scenario. Well, it could work, right? But it would take a lot more configuration and maintenance and so forth than something like Tunnel. Another good reason for Tunnel is the way that Tunnel will work with conditional access to make sure that the device is compliant with your conditional access policy. So that makes sense perfectly for uh, an enrolled device, but that also works for an unenrolled device, a, a device managed only with uh, man. And then thirdly, compatibility, right? Compatibility with your app protection policies where uh, you have those uh, installed, right? On an, on an enrolled device. That's, that's good. Uh, being able to do per app kind of configuration, also uh, very helpful. So on tunnel for MAM, why do that? Well, again, we talked about it, personal devices. If the user doesn't want to have their device enrolled in management, yet wants to use apps on their device, then this actually allows IT to manage that experience when the app is accessing corporate data and so forth and give access accordingly to the internal network uh, very securely, right? Secure access um, uh, to your network where uh, you can use, you know, conditional access, you can use single sign-on, you know, different things, right? Okay. So there's a few things that I will show you in terms of requirements, in terms of the way uh, Tunnel for MAM will work. So for uh, iOS, you need version 14 or later, Android 10 or later. There's some general requirements, the way that you implement Tunnel on an iPhone, uh, uh, iPad, whatever, iOS versus Android is different. There are different requirements. So for Android, you need the company portal uh, and Defender for Endpoint app. For iOS, you don't need either one of those, right? There's uh, certain support for line of business type applications that uh, can be out there. I'm not going to read all these to you. You can look at them yourself. Uh, there's some general features for Android and uh, iOS that will um, uh, be a little bit different based on the device type, but still uh, Tunnel for Mam is available. There's also different browser type configurations between Android and iOS. Again, you can read these uh, yourself. Pause the video if you want to take a look, right? Okay. So the best way to really show you how this works. Now, this is a diagram for Tunnel. The, the discussion here is Tunnel for Man. The diagram applies regardless, right? There is a section where, um, well, anyway, let's just let's just go through, right? So let me just walk through what these different components are. So A, of course, that's Intune. B, here's uh, Intra ID. You know, C is broken up into three components. So um, the way Tunnel is implemented is you will have a Docker-enabled Linux server that facilitates the VPN. So you have three components represented by the, the three C's. You have the uh, management agent up here, component of the Linux server. You have the authentication uh, plugin right down here. And then you have the gateway itself, right? All of this is running on a Linux server in, enabled with uh, Docker. Then you have the public facing IP address. Uh, you have a firewall <coughs> in between. Uh, most likely, <clears throat> pardon me, <clears throat> and then you have your, uh, and you may have uh, also, where is it, uh, you have your device, right, you have the device that is actually 
uh, managed. Uh, here you have an internal proxy server, perhaps. Uh, you don't have to have that. That's, of course, optional. You have your corporate network that's going to have the data that your uh, device wants to have access to. And then you have the, um, the, the public, uh, public internet uh, item I uh, up here, right? So up, up here uh, is the public internet, right? So those are the components. The actual actions that you take to actually get this done, the Intune administrator, step one, is going to install the Microsoft Tunnel and uh, the authentication components uh, and so forth. Uh, the Intune admi uh, admin will then configure the authentication components so that your tunnel will work with uh, Intra ID. And then thirdly, the management agent from Intune, uh, or, or sorry, management agent will communicate with Intune and learn about the different uh, configurations uh, and so forth. The uh, Intune administrator will then deploy a VPN profile uh, to the devices so that they can leverage the uh, tunnel gateway whenever, uh, whenever uh, the app needs to. Now, there's some things I said in there talking about some configuration that the Intune administrator will do and setting up your management agent and uh, making sure that communicates with Intune. And certainly that's true. I go over that in my Microsoft Tunnel uh, video as mentioned. However, let me show you the area of Intune that I'm referring to. So if you go into Tenant Administration and then look for Microsoft Tunnel here, all right, Microsoft Tunnel Gateway, well, you'll see that I have one. It's not working right now. It's broken, right? It's unhealthy. But what I mean is when I say the Intune Administrator will configure different things on the device or on the, uh, the Linux server, what I mean is all of this, right? There's uh, servers, and I'm, I'm probably going backwards through these in order, but uh, there's servers, and, and there's multiple ways you can set up servers. You can have groups of servers and, and so forth, right? In my tiny lab, I just created one. But there's servers that are a part of a configuration. There's sites that will be defined uh, to uh, offer service, so servers will be part of sites, right? Then there's server configurations, right, that you will apply. So uh, that's what I'm talking about that you build, and then that gets imposed on top of the Linux server, right, from Intune, and that Linux server then is able to uh, serve the needs uh, that are out there, right? Then finally, um, the device is going to, uh, step number five, authenticate whenever it needs access, and then we'll communicate. There's a, kind of a split tunneling that goes on. Some things go one way uh, to the tunnel. Some things go to the public internet, uh, depending. And then the tunnel is going to route traffic uh, to your internal proxy server, if that's a thing, uh, to be able to get through finally to your corporate network. If this is not a thing, then it just goes directly to your corporate network. And so that's the way this works. And it works the same way, whether it's an app that is on an unenrolled device trying to access data on your internal network, or if it's a fully managed uh, device, right? So effectively, what you get in the Intune suite is the ability to extend tunnel support to devices that are only managed through MAM, unenrolled devices, right? Okay, now, if you want to see a demo of tunnel working and so forth, I do have that in video form. I don't have a device that I'm going to man enable and show tunnel, you know, here because really it's the same kind of demo. It's just a different way that the device is configured. If you want to see a demo specifically of, or a walkthrough, if you will, specifically of how to do something or how to configure things on devices, there is a separate uh, demo tutorial for Android and iOS. I include the specific verbiage at the bottom of the uh, slide, if I can find my pointer here. Uh, anyway, you can see the link at the bottom of the slide here that you could go find on the web. And same thing for iOS, iPadOS, whatever. If you want to see a walkthrough, uh, you can. And so really, that's it, right? I'm just trying to uh, make sure I cover all the components, not a huge, long 
discussion this time, but hopefully informative. And we will continue the series and see you next time.